Hey everybody, this is Everyday Commentary, uh, and this is a video overview of this knife. And this knife is the Hinderer uh, Half Stop, or Half Track, the Half Stop, the Hinderer Half Track. And this is a production knife by Rick Hinderer. Um, this model is uh, the one with the G10 overlay and the titanium uh, lock side. It is a very small knife. I'll show you in comparison to say a double A battery. Uh, this is a, a really small knife, especially for a hinderer. It's about the same size as the Strider PT, um, which was also a really small knife. And this knife is uh, one of the better hinderers I've ever had. I've reviewed a lot of hinderer designs. I've owned a lot of hinderer knives. And this is my favorite hinderer knife. Um, the knife runs a, a blade steel uh, S35VN. There are two blade shapes right now. One is a Tanto, and the other one is this one, which is a very unusual sort of clip pointy kind of thing. It is a blade steel. Uh, it runs a S35VN blade steel. And um, as you can tell, this has a little G10 overlay, which I think is relatively stylish. This is sort of a cream color. It's hard to tell, but this is a cream color, and then the anodization is blue. Um, I had a review sample that was black with uh, with titanium, and then they make ones that are all titanium. But I do like the G10, it gives a little more texture. Um, the knife fits really well in the hand, it's sort of a modified, you can get four full fingers on there. Um, the interesting thing about this knife is there's really no, it's very geometric, there's only you know a circle here and then straight lines and angles everywhere. There's not a whole lot of the jelly bean shape that you get with something like the XM18. Um, the knife is really robust. I feel like I can use this and do just about anything and not have to worry about it. Uh, as is usual with uh, hinder knives, the, the fit and finish is really quite good. There's a lot of things that I like about this knife. The uh, extra heavy dark stone wash finish, the acid stone wash finish, is really great. I've used this knife a ton and you can't even really tell. Um, it does use the proprietary screws on the pivot, which I hate. But, uh, you know, whatever. It's just sort of the cost of doing business. It has these really nice bulky standoffs that are sort of the uh, hallmark of the hinderer look. Um, it's a very thick knife. I'm not going to lie and say that this is a light knife or a thick knife. It's well over four ounces, uh, even though the blade is only uh, 2.75 inches long. Um, but the one thing that I would note is it's a significant step up from other hinderer knives is the thing I just showed you, which is the flipping action. Flipping action on this knife, even though it runs on Teflon washers, is really quite good. Uh, most most of the XM18s I've handled, and I haven't handled a, a Gen 5 XM18, but most of the XM18s that I've handled required some sort of wrist flick to get them to work. And this doesn't really require that at all. And that's a big deal. I mean, I think this just makes it a much more convenient, much better knife than, than other similar knives. The, this came out around the same time as the MP1 and uh, just before the Jurassic, so I don't know how those flip. But if they flip like this knife, I mean, this knife is, it's not impossible to get it to fail. You can kind of ease it out there and break the detent. Um, it's not it's not as good, say, as something like the the uh, Ferrum Forge uh, Master Up Jet. I can't get that thing to false fire or fail fire at all. It just, if, it, if you break the detent, it's opening. This knife is not quite that smooth, and as you can tell, it requires some effort to close the knife. Um, but it's a very, very solid knife. The edge is, is quite robust. And even though the edge is quite robust, it's it's thin. I mean, it's thin right behind the cutting edge. As you can see, I just, just got a little bit, of, a little bit of my skin right there. That's pretty good. Um, it's not like a Strider. One of the issues that I've had with the Strider, especially the Strider PT, is that thing felt like they just... It was like a cliff or something, as opposed to a sort of shallow approach to the, the cutting edge. But the shallow approach here is really good. Um, I also feel like the tip on this knife is especially robust. It sort of, you know, has the same idea as the, the Tonto, where there's a, a point here, except for the Tonto, this point's here, and then it brings it down to this really robust, thick tip. I've done, you know, a lot of, a lot of cutting, no prying, but some stabbing. And uh, the knife is really fine. I mean, there's nothing, nothing at all sort of diminished the performance of the damage to the edge of the knife. A um, couple of interesting points. Uh, it uses a, a hidden stop pin in the blade. Uh, I believe this is a Phil Boga uh idea. And it, it is very clever. 
Um, I like it a lot. It makes the knife easier to maintain. There's no stop pin up top, and it locks it in both positions. It stops it in the open position, and it also stops it in the closed position. And it's a very clever solution. Uh, you know, there's a couple ways you can do this. You just have a regular stop pin like you see on the Sabenza. You could have a, a hidden stop pin that exists inside around the pivot, and there's like a channel in the pivot. But if you want to make it pretty robust and simple, that's a very good solution. I've never had a knife fail because of the stop pin, but it feels like, you know, this stop pin is just a beast. You can see it there. I don't feel like this thing is going anywhere. The other thing is, you know, there's absolutely no blade play. And I've really tugged on this knife. I've had this knife since December. I got this for my birthday. Um, there's no blade play. There's no movement on the lock bar. It does have the hidden or lock stop, but it lacks an insert. Quite frankly, I don't know where I would get a replaceable insert when my insert wore out or whatever. But um, I've never had the need for one. I've never seen enough wear for it to make a difference. And uh, I've owned some of my knives, especially my some of my frame locks, for quite a long time. So uh, overall, I'm really impressed with the knife. It does, of course, contain the standard hinder clip. And you can uh, mix and match with a bunch of accessories because all of his accessories and standoffs and that kind of stuff, uh, most of them are swappable between knife lines. I think there are some that are specific, and most of the stuff on the XM24 is specific, but the rest of them, uh, aside from the um, modular backspacer, can be swapped in. So if you're looking for a small knife and you want it to be durable, this is a great choice. There's a bunch of knives that used to be produced that are in this class, and now they're not, the 900 and the uh, Strider PT. So, uh, you know, there's not a ton of choices, but this is a really good one. Uh, so look for a review coming soon, and uh, thanks for watching.